All right, squad, today we're gonna to continue on with clip flow and we're gonna set up the layout page. I want to also check out view components for Rails and give it a spin, learn something new. Let's jump in. All right, we're back. So this is what we have so far in the project. I've done a few little tweaks offline, but you can see now we've got these little, little hint Tooltip, that's what it's called. When you hover, you have these little tooltips, and that's perfect. So it just gives a little bit more context to the icons, because sometimes icons could be hard to understand. And then at the top here, we've got this little button. So what we're gonna do in this app is when you stream, we have a thing called stream mode, or state, I guess, of the app. And when you're streaming, we're gonna hide a lot of UI, just so that it gives user a bit more space to actually show the content and we can remove things like settings and headers. Now, what I'll do is I'll show you, I've done a few little things here. I've added this data streaming property here or attribute. It's currently set to false. Now, if we change this here to true, you see that disappears, right? So we're using the data attribute as basically app context. And it's actually quite a nice way of doing it. So we'll be able to update this via JavaScript when we click on this button. We'll be able to change, toggle this and then we'll hide some of the UI, right? And I also wanna show you something else that I did. So I'm just change that back to false. And in the, in the meantime, what I've done is in the nav, I've got this currently just a property here, but we'll change it later. If we go turn this to an A true there, you'll see we've got this little kind of animation going and that change will change like when we're running actually streaming in stream mode it'll kind of flash so it looks like you're recording right and we'll and we'll swap out the icon to a stop sign and we'll change the word to end streaming all right stop streaming i guess so those are little things that i've added in the meantime but what i want to do now is i want to add in a if we have a look here, we wanna add in this kind of thing. So we're gonna have a content area and then we're gonna have this heading section that we wanna run. So this, I want this to be a component so it stays the same, so it always keeps the same distance. So we don't have to keep playing with that every time. So I want that to be a component. And we're gonna use something different today. So I'll jump in and show you that. So I've spoken about this probably in the past, don't know if I have or not, but the view component here. So it, it, it works in a similar way. So it allows us to create views in our components folder. And then the view can have an art, it'll have a Ruby file an HTML.erb, so basically the template, so that you create this here, and then you can inject and use it very similar to what you'd expect with a React component. And you can compose them and they're very easy to test. So I wanna give this a spin today because I think this is really cool. We maintain and write everything in still in Rails, but we have the ability to like organize. And I think that's the main thing that I like about React is the organization piece. So we get to do this with these tools. So we'll give this a spin today and see how it plays out. All right, so first things first, let's jump into the gem file and we need to add in the view component gem. All right, so chuck that in here and run bundle and get that. Done, cool. Now we're gonna run bin dev again. Boot it up. All right, so quick start to create a new view component. Let's create a new component called heading, all right? So I'm gonna just open a new tab here, cut that out. I'm just gonna open a new tab here and then I'm gonna run rails g component and this will be called a heading component and it has, I guess it does, does it have anything? I guess we can say size. So they're using title and then content. So we'll just have, we'll have size here, yeah? All right, let's run that and see what happens. So it's created a new component here and it's created app components, heading component, HTML. So it creates two files, it creates the Ruby file and it creates the HTML ERB file. So if we go here now, we have app components, heading component, now, what I don't think I like, that it's not nested, I, I want this to be in a folder, all right? So let's see if we can actually do that. So I'm gonna try and run something and just see if it works. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to run this again. I'm just gonna go heading slash. Now, I'm not sure this is going to work, but let's give that a spin. Okay, so it's created this subdirectory now 
the only problem is that it's it's prefixing this here so I'm not sure that's ideal so for now let's just remove this and we'll just try it out like this okay so we start with the size here so that's where we can set the size that's all cool and then here's our template all right so let's just chuck this in to our Kanban here so let's now render this I'm just gonna render here let's see what the syntax is the syntax to render is just this so let's drop that in so it's render and then the component name so it's heading component and then new and then here we're gonna go size and we're gonna go uh, large and I wonder if we just do something like this h1 because then we can say because we kind of want to create a component system right so we want to say h1 I mean we could just say main no, I reckon we roll with this style, H1, yeah? And then inside of here, we do end, right? So that's kind of like, if you imagine in JSX, you'd have the opening and closing thing here. And then what we're going to just write is like uh, tasks, all right? Now, let's see what happens. Unlitionalized constant, that's fine. Let's just restart this. Okay. So we don't have anything there yet, but I think if we jump into here, we've got to actually render out the content. So let's see what they've done. They've got, so here's the ERB. So we have to render out content, right? So if we just chuck that in there, does that do it? Nope. Content comes in the do block. Content passed through the view components block is assigned to the content assessor. Okay. Let me have a look and see what we're doing wrong. Okay, I've actually just found out something interesting here. You can views and other assets can be placed in a subdirectory with the same name as the component and you just have to use the sidecar flag. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to generate that component again, just using the sidecar flag and just to see how that works. It's interesting because it looks like it only puts the ERB in the sidecar. So you still end up with two things here. So that's interesting. All right, add heading template here. Oh, there it is, it's right there. I've been sitting here, okay. So let's just make this uh, text white on this whole thing, just so we can actually see it. There we go, so it was there the whole time, sitting to the right, sitting here wondering why. So let's just make this, um, Flex coal as well, so it'll sit under. There we go. Ah, there we go. So now we're on. All right. So inside this here now, we can go here and we can just say content, and this will probably work now. There we go. Tasks. Okay. So now when we render out our heading component, it's going to go like that. We could we could also there's also a little thing you can say. We could literally just say title, like if we wanted to, we could just say, or text, we could go size here and we could say text and then we could say tasks and then we could, don't need the do block, right? And then we can take this in here and I think we can just do this and then in here we can just say, there we go. So you can do that. That's another option as well. So that's for like simple things that don't have children. You could probably just render like that and that probably feels a bit cleaner. So now we've got size and, um, and text, all right? So let's look at what we want to do inside of here. So we want to do, depending on the size, we want to use the tag, right? Let's just start by adding this. Firstly, let's go, so we've got different sizes in Tailwind. So we want to go, let's, let's have a look at what sizes in Tailwind we can do here. So it's going to be text, I think it's font size. Let's try text 2XL and just see what that feels like. Okay, I do want to just reset this just so I can get a good, so inside the design, 32 we're looking at. So 32 is equivalent 3XL or 4XL. Let's go with the 3XL. So that's probably what our heading will look like that's at that size right so we're going to need to also determine here what sizes we have for the sizes that we apply in because 
with Tailwind, it's not going to set this to an H1 and then know, like if you set this to H1 like this, it doesn't actually change the size. So if I remove this, you see that's H1 and then H6 is the same size, right? So we're going to actually have to override that size there. So what we need to do is probably create some sort of object where we can say what sizes we want for each heading level that we do. All right, so it looks like we can just create methods inside of this component. So that's what I want to try here. So I want to say, let's call it font. I wonder if we can do class, class name. All right, so let's do this. And I'm just going to try and inject this and see if we can. All right, so we'll inject the class name here now. And I wonder if Tailwind's going to play nice here. You know what we might have to do? We might have to do that styling thing. So it's going to be um, font or text size. The te yeah. So we can't do that. It's text size, text 3XL. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return 3XL, right? And then we have to do our style trick here. So we go style equals text. Let's go heading. And then we're going to say is this and we're going to interpolate that value here. All right, and then here we're going to just say heading text size. All right, and let's just split these like this so it's easy to read. Okay, let's see what's looking here. So we've got our style heading text size is 3XL. But for some reason, that's not, maybe we have to put this in here. No. Okay, let me have a look at see, see what's going on there. All right, so I actually went down the rabbit hole for no reason. We can chuck in this um, class name because it is a st static. It is already known to Tailwind, like it does no text 3XL. So we can just chuck that straight in. It's only when you want variable data. Um, that it doesn't know like random colors or something. So that works. Okay, so now what we can do because we have this here, we can say if size equals h1, so we can say uh, return text 3xl if size equals h1, and then we can just keep going. So like all the sizes we support, so we, let's go down to three. Let's just drop these here, right? And then we can basically just return text large for everything else right so if you don't supply us a text size that matches one of these we're going to hit text large so now we've got that happening now if we change this back so if we go back to kanban if we now change this to h2 you can see it goes down h3 h4 so h3 we need to fix that i think i made a typo H2 text XL. So it didn't look like there was much of a jump between those two. So H3, H2, H1. And then H3, 4. So H3, maybe there's no text XL. There is a text XL. and a text large as well. Okay. But anyway, that that looks like it's running. What we're doing, I think that's going to be a comp compiling issue there. To be honest. All right. Anyway, that's all good. I think what I need to do is I also need to get Tailwind to watch the components file because I think that's what's it not happening right now. So let me just check that so what i'm gonna do here in the tailwind.config which is in the root i'm just gonna add here i'm gonna go app components all right and let's see if that does anything don't know if it does 
But anyway, there we go. So we got we got the different sizes there. And I reckon we can even bump this up because this, if we jump in here, let's that we can play with our component size. So we're going to go like four XL, two XL and large. So yeah, you can see it doesn't know anything. It doesn't know. It can't compile. All right, so that could be an interesting problem. All right, so Tailwind can't handle the dynamic class name, which is what I thought. Um, and that's why it's not compiling those other versions. So it's not, that's not going to be a solution for us. So let's go here. We're going to go heading, um, text, size, and then we're going to set that, right? And then let's just see if this works. And we put that in here. That doesn't still doesn't want to work. Because yeah, so what we need to do is be able to inject this value in through there. Otherwise, this isn't really going to be dynamic enough for us. So we need to give it the type here because when we don't put this length on here, it assumes that it's color, right? So we need to give it and say, hey, it's the length. I don't know why it's using length, but that's if you look here, it's called resolving ambiguities. Um, so it doesn't know if it's if we're talking about the size or if we're talking about the color. So we can say length for font size and color for color. So that's now fixed the problem there. So we can actually go back and revert now to, um, let's see if we can actually go, I wonder if 3XL works still. No, 3XL doesn't work. So we will have to use fixed values. So we can see here the font size is 1.875 rem. Right, so it's 1.875 rem, and that's gonna give us our size, okay? So now we can define these inside of our component. Now, a lot of this mucking around is not because of view components or rails, it's just me not understanding Tailwind exactly and all the nuances. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna say, so 4XL, let's just make sure that was 4XL. 4XL is 2.25 rem, sorry. 2.25 rem, and then, 2XL is 1.5 RAM. So we're kind of like hard coding the size, but not really because our RAM values here. XL is 125, 1.25 RAM. And then large is finally 1.125, 1.125 RAM. All right. And then what we probably want to do is have the font uh, weight, I imagine. Probably font medium for all of these, yeah? So we're going to go into here and we're going to say font medium because I think a heading font is usually a medium here. What have we got talking here? A semi-bold. So that's kind of kind of the right thing. Um, all right. And now let's see if we can muck around with our actual Kanban board here and change this to an H2. Let's make it smaller again. H1, H2, uh, what are you doing champ? I've probably hard coded something, yes I have, like a noodle. Um, so this is text size in here. So now we're injecting that, there we go. So now we go to H2, bigger, and then H1, bigger again, all right? What I also want to do, which I think I don't, if it's doing it, let's just have a look if we inspect here. Are we getting any line heights? I think I want to reset the line height of the heading component to um, just one. So let's just go here, we go line height. All right, let's go leading none on that. There we go, so that'll just keep it all tight so we can add our own gaps and margins and it's not just being added automatically for us. All right, so that's there. And then I think finally, you probably want to be able to pass in a component, you want to pass in the color. We aren't actually doing that in here, so that's kind of good. So this is being determined by the parents. So that's kind of handy. So we don't actually have to worry about that too much. Um, I think that's all good. Yeah, because we've got this text white here. So if we change this to gray 600, that changes as well. All right, excellent. So that's controlling it there. So that's good. Um, that's actually what we want. So now we've got our view components. So that's really cool. And that's our heading components. Now, whenever we want to use heading, we just drop this in, tell it the size and we can say like schedule and that changes as well. Super cool. I like that. That's a really nice tidy way of doing things. 
So we can close this off now. We're good with our heading component. What we want to do now as well, moving forward, is actually setting up this kind of this space, so kind of the layout. So we want to, the layout looks like it's always going to start, like it'll have a bit of padding at the top here, and it's going to pad in from the sides, okay? So we'll set up the, like the, I guess the container, the main, the main content component. Okay, let's set up this uh, layout or main content component, right? So what I'm going to do, jump in here in the Rails G component, I'm going to say main content and I don't, we won't need any pr like params on this one. So we're just going to do the sidecar again. All right. So here we go. Here's the ERB here. So what we're going to do here with the main content, it's going to be a div. Let's just see. I think we're already using the main. So it's the main content. That's fine. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to say render out content because that's all it's doing. And then we're going to apply the settings here on the div. And what does that look like? So that looks like the main content will be the actual container for everything. So it'll probably be this piece. In my head, that looks like this. We're going to go render main content component dot new. And then we don't have to pass anything here. And then we're going to just say do, right? And then we're going to have an end here. And then I'm just going to write test for now. I'll leave this piece there. Let's just see if that works. There's test. Okay, so that we've got that component rendering. And now what we want to do is I want to actually grab this and put it inside. All right. Okay, that's looking good. And now we're just going to grab this class name. And just stick it here. And then what we can do is we can get rid of this. All right, so now that looks starts looking very similar to your JSX in, in um, React. All right, so now we've got our block all right and now what we want to do is we want to basically give it some padding because we want to pad this in slightly on the sides and then also at the top so let's have a look at padding so you, in the, on the iphone i think you want about in mobile you want about 16 pixels so that's p4 okay so we're going to chuck padding 4 on that all right so we got that now and that's looking pretty good. And then what we want to do here, so let's, for now, let's just move this piece down under. All right. So we, and you can see in the design, we've got quite a big um, gap. So I think that's to kind of push it down so it doesn't line up there and kind of lines up with the top of this icon here. All right, so let's look what that looks like. That's probably going to be... Let's go like, let's try a 12 for the top. So we're going to go P4, but then we're going to go P top 12. So it probably needs more than that. So even a P16. That's in line now. Okay. So that's, I think that's roughly where it needs to sit. So that gives us our main content now. So that's going to control all of our, so we can drop that on every page. Um, and then it's very simple, like it's a very simple component, but it just means we don't have to constantly, if we decide, oh no, I want it, we want to change the padding or something, we don't have to go through every single page and change it, we can just change this main component. And that's the, the beauty of using components. Now, what we can do as well is we could have a, a component that controls the stream mode visibility. So when we toggle stream mode, we want to have a component, so we don't have to basically add this class every time to everything that we do, we can have a, a stream mode component that wraps certain things. So for instance, you'd wrap this heading component in a stream mode uh, conditional, all right? So let's try and add something like that. I think what we'll do is I might leave that for the next video. So what we've done so far is we've, we've installed view components and we've created two components now and we've got our kind of main layout content ready to go all right so catch you on the next one and we'll talk through adding in this special stream rendering component and probably toggling this little button here see you soon